Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we will learn more about input types. This is the list of all input types available. The ones highlighted are the new ones introduced in HTML5. We have already used a couple of these in the previous videos. Let's try some more in this video. So the first input type that we are going to try is reset. It is used to create a reset button. So when user clicks on this button, the form fields are reset. So let's try an example to understand it better. Let's add a form element. Let's add, say, two input fields. Let's say type text and another with type password. Let's give them the name property. So name username similarly here name is password let's give them some label so username and wait line this one password and break line because we want the input field to be on the next line let's save it let's open the live server and as you can see our form is on the screen so let's bring our code editor as well. All right, now let's add this reset input type. So let's add the input element. Let's give it a type. Say reset. Let's give it a value because this is a button and it needs a label. So let's say reset. Let's save it. Let's bring it on the next line. Now, if I write something here, and I write something here, and when I click on reset button, everything should just go back to the default values, which was empty. So let's click here. And as you can see, both my input boxes are empty now. Cool, so that's the purpose of reset input type. Moving on to the next one, which is input type date. Let's comment this. So input type, Let's say date. Let's give it a name, say date. Let's save it. And as you can see, we've got a date input box here. So we can either write it like this, so 0, 5, 2, 7, 1, 9, 9, 4. Or what we can do is click on this drop down and it shows us a calendar. We can select the months, the days and it gets updated. So this input type date, it shows a date picker to help users select a date as we just saw. We can also put a restriction to ensure that the user selects a date before or after a certain date. So let's try that. So let's say I want the max date to be 1999, 01 and 01. And let's add another one here. Let's call it end date. And the minimum should be, say, 2010. Let's save it. And let's check it out. So when you click on the drop down, it's showing you dates before 1999. So if you look here, we've put a condition. So the max date can be 1st of January, 1999. So let's try selecting 2nd of January. So if you select, nothing happens. But if you select one, the value gets selected. Similarly, for the second one, we defined the minimum date should be 1st January, 2010. So if you click the drop down and you scroll up, there are no years before 2010. So if you click here, you can just select 1st of January. So that's how you add restrictions to ensure that user selects a date from the range you specify. All right, so moving on to the next one, which is input type file. It is used for file uploads. So when a user clicks on the choose file button, a file browser window opens. So let's give this a try. 
So let's add another input element here. Let's give it a type, file. Let's give it a name, say image. Let's save it. Let's bring it on the next line. Say br. So now if you click here, it opens the file browser and you can select a file from your local directory. So if I click here, it opens and it shows the name of my file. If I click again, I can select another file, say this one, and the file name gets updated. That's all for today, guys. If there's something that you did not understand, feel free to drop a comment and we will discuss it. See you in the next video. Bye and take care.